Speaking of the Dolphins, Rob, there was a report today, Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk. He wrote that the Tom Brady going to Miami. Now, you remember last year they, there was punishment for tampering. Uh, they tried to get Brady and Sean Payton to Miami. And Florio wrote today that Brady to the Dolphins is still very much alive and on the table as a possibility this offseason. Your thoughts? Don't do it, Miami. Run the other way. Wow. Don't do it. Don't keep living in the past. This is not the same Tom Brady. Have you watched this season? What have you not watched? He's not the same guy. I'm not saying he can't play or whatever. Or he He's going to retire when he wants because he's built up that kind of cred. But, but that terrible in the red zone. He had both of his top receivers all year. Offensively, it was a huge struggle. Tom didn't play well. Like, oh, my God, it was the defense. Because Tom Brady played great, and it was the defense. No. I mean, here's a highlight from Tom Brady this past season. Chris. Worst throw in 10 years by Tom Brady. I mean, that's First what was all, happening. That's from like seven no, years ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it still works. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, like the Tom Brady, I get it. They saw what happened in Tampa. It was the perfect storm. You know what it was? They had a top seven, eight defense. They had a quarterback who threw 30 picks. So uh, you put another, they won eight games with a quarterback who threw 30 picks. Seven. All right, seven, which was unbelievable at that time. You shouldn't have won that many games. And Tom Brady came along. Don't forget, in the NFC Championship game against the Packers, he threw three picks, but their defense was unbelievable. Don't forget when they beat Patrick Mahomes and the Super Bowl and kept Patrick Mahomes scoreless. They kept Patrick Mahomes, Chris's uh, Michael Jordan-esque guy, scoreless in the, in the uh, Super Bowl. You know why he was scoreless? Because their defense was unbelievable, and they were missing two offensive linemen. He had no time to throw. It was a terrible mismatch. I'm not taking it away from Tom Brady, but the Dolphins are thinking that. No, they're thinking like he, he's the magical elixir, and and you and add Tom Brady, add water, stir, and you're going to win a championship. It ain't so. I, if I'm Miami, stay the course. You were seven and four at one point. And things didn't go, you know, didn't go your way in the second half. But build on that. Rob Parker. Stop it! Miami, start it. All right? Go get Tom Brady. And I'm not saying he's the old Tom Brady. He's he's old, but he's not the old Tom Brady. And number one, I'm going to start here, Rob. Tom Brady at 46 years old next year. And I hate to say this, but it's a fact that we have to deal with and Miami has to deal with. He is more likely to play through the season, 17 games, than Tua, the much younger Tua is. If Tua had not gotten injured, Rob, with the concussions, and now it's really, it seems like a serious thing, then I would be with you. Because he played great. He had great chemistry with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, and they were cooking. They had beaten the, uh, the, the Bills. They were playing great football. But he did get hurt in the concussions. He's had, what, three this year? And I, I, there is, you have to be very concerned if you're Miami about his durability and ability to get through the year next season, and they are built to win now. I mean, Tyreek Hill, Waddle, uh, we'll see if they bring Mike Giusecki back to tight end. Uh, the running game is, is good enough. Mike McDaniel is, is a very good coach. Uh, I love him offensively. Their defense does need improvement. The offensive line has gotten better, but it can still improve. But, Rob, other than San, Fran San Francisco, and it, look, if Brock Purdy gets them to the Super Bowl or something, then they probably won't change quarterbacks. Um, if they lose this weekend, maybe they would be interested in Tom Brady. But outside of the Niners, when I look at the teams that are in the quarterback business, 
If I'm Tom Brady, Miami, I think, is his best option. And I'm not saying cut Tua. I I would keep Tua. He, he'd be on his fourth year of his deep rookie deal. He's only making like four, a little more than $4.5 million. Keep him. Let him learn at the feet of Brady. I don't know that sitting out, a, you know, backing up a year where you're not playing and getting hit a lot. I don't know if that has anything to do with, you know, helps you with concussions or anything or recovery from them. But I give him a year to learn under the feet of the goat and, you know, get himself as healthy as possible. And maybe, you know, you're only talking about a one-year deal with Tom Brady. You know, one year, maybe a team option for a second or whatever. But one year, and then after that, if it doesn't go well, if it does, whatever, if you, you know, you can bring back Tua in after that. So I, I think it makes sense, Rob, because they – if if Tua were to get hurt next year, then you're talking about this team that's ready to win in the hands of a, a Teddy Bridgewater or a Skylar Thompson who who will probably get to start this weekend, and it's not going to be pretty. So I think they sh- I think this is a good move for both sides. I, I still Tom Brady looks like, and this is the words of coaches and people playing the NFL, not me, as, as a scared quarterback in the pocket who, you know, doesn't look like he wants to get hit. And I get it at that age and the years that he's put in. So I I just don't know if you're thinking that Tom Brady's going to last for sure or what's, what's, you know, what's happening his way. But he's been more durable even this year at 45, you know what I'm saying? Right, but I'm just saying as he continues to age. And Brady had one of the best wide receiver duos in the league with Evans and Good and Godwin, Chris. It and he ain't couldn't, as good as Miami. And he couldn't even get to 500. And some of the teams that they beat. I, but I they just, had no run game. They had the worst run game in the league uh, by, okay. by, by and, far. And, and here's the other thing, too. If you're worried about uh, Tua then and you really want to make a move, Derek Carr is the guy you want to go out and get. Derek Carr yeah. is a guy who uh, I would I would look at it long term or Jimmy G if you're ready to win, but not he, Brady. He can't stay healthy either. Those, those guys, like Brady Jimmy is G. too old, and I just this year Brady I just didn't had see a better it. season than both of them. Yeah, but I you're mean, gonna. I mean, seriously, like Brady. Look, and I get it. You, you're not. I'm not sitting here saying his he's QBR the same is lower than those Brady. two, Chris. But he he threw for 276 I'm, yards I'm, I'm a just game. Talking about I know what, he threw it a lot. He threw it more than anybody in the league. He threw 25 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Carr threw fewer touchdowns, 24, and 14 picks. I'm just talking and, about and the Carr's QBR, QBR of both Carr's of them. QBR, it's close. It's like three. I mean, and, and, and if you go by passer rating, Brady's was higher. So Brady had more touchdowns, higher passer rating, more yards per game. He didn't have Devon as good as Evans and Godwin are. They aren't Devontae Adams, and they were down. And, 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 and they Carr were down in the bottom game. They were down. Carr in the, had a run game. He down had in the, the bottom, best running back in the league this year, Josh Jacobs. In, in the red zone, they were they were oh, they like were, one, they were they struggled. They were one and, of the worst but, teams in the league in the red zone, which was unbelievable. Well, when you don't have a run game, it's harder in the red zone. Yeah, and, and it's harder in general. They couldn't do pl- much play action. So, I, I I mean, I hear you. I'm not saying he's the Brady that went to Tampa in the first year. But I still think he's shown he needs everything to kind of be right. I'm not, That's the truth. But if it is right, then I still think he can make those throws. Uh, and I think Miami would be tough. Now, I still wouldn't pick him to win the AFC. Next and here's year. the other thing. And look at the AFC and all those young gun quarterbacks – if I'm Tom Brady, the AFC is not where I really want to go because look at those guys you got to climb over to get there. And there's four or five of them. I know he doesn't look at it like that because when you're a great player and you've won, you don't you don't look at people and shaking your boots. But my God, there are four or five amazing that's young not, quarterbacks. Even that division, he'd have to deal with Josh Allen. Uh, if the Jets, I think Derek Carr may end up with the Jets, and and they're going to be really good. Uh, if they get Carr, I hear you. I mean, Carr would be, you know, something to look at. Uh, but I, for them, I would go Brady because their receivers are a little more seasoned. You know, obviously Garrett Wilson was a rookie this year. Brees Hall was a rookie with the Jets. Carr's younger, obviously, than Brady. I think that'd be a little more of a fit uh, for the Jets, but. 
I, I think the bottom line is Brady to Miami to me makes sense for both parties to rob it doesn't what say you Tom Brady to the Dolphins you like you hate all right let's kick it off Chris with uh Mark in Sacramento you're on the odd couple Fox Sports Radio what's up Mark what's going on gentlemen what up Mark how you doing man (laughs) hanging in there man um you know I think (laughs) if he's gonna go any place Miami's already been punished for it with the draft choice right Right. Um, we already knew that's where he wanted to go. At least he can stay. And if this factors in, I got to give him credit. I'm fair. If this is where he feels like he can continue to play, but yet still be get more involved with his boys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, where, where, where else would he would, would go? I, I understand it's the AFC East, and it's, it's tough. It's not the same. I get it. But if he factors in – yeah, I need to listen to people and get my ass closer to my boys, and maybe be, and maybe this is a way. I got to give him some credit if that's factored in. I have to. All I right. have to. Right. Yeah, it'd be not. I mean, you, look, you would think that's factored in. And like I hope you said, so, but you don't know what Nobody would no criticize more. him for that. Yeah. <laughs> right, you don't know, but I, I would hope that yeah. that's factored in for sure. No, no, yes. no doubt yes. about it. Uh, thank you, Mark. Appreciate your call. In Mobile, Alabama, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio on a TV theme song Thursday. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, guys, I hope you are doing well. I, uh, all my thoughts and prayers out to Chris uh, about uh, losing you, dad. Thank Tough you. time, I know. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea because, you know, where else do all the senior citizens go? Miami for <laughs> retirement, you know? Right. And, uh, and the early bird special. With, <laughs> <laughs> right around with the left turn signal on and, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Play a little pickleball, maybe some yard yard uh, croquet or something. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's true. He would be down there. Early bird special. You know, the Golden Girls. Chris was based. <laughs> that's the show was based in Miami, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Play that theme song for t- for Tom. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yo, it's show. coming up. It, it is coming up. Tom We're, or not? That's it's gonna right. Be Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, Tim, <laughs> in Arizona, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Tim? Hey guys, it's actually Jason. Oh, Jason, uh, sorry about guys. that. Thank you. Uh, you're all, y'all good? No problem. Uh, I like the. I'm a Dolphins fan, and I I like the idea of Tom coming to Miami in a and but keeping Tua, which would one right. make up for the fact that what they missed out on with everything trying to get him earlier. He wants. Right. He still wants to play. We'll take him at what we can and also allow Tua an actual year off to, one, learn from the GOAT, as everyone likes to say, and also have Except Dane me. in the building, too, would be beneficial. Have you no, watched, have you watched I, Brady I, like, this year, I don't think Jason? it has to be looked at as an either-or, you know, because you can keep Tua. I, I'm, I'm with you. Jason, are you at all? Yeah. Did you watch, How closely did you watch Brady and just – See how much he struggled this year as well offensively, you know, with the team. Uh, he struggled, of course. Uh, you know, I, I've seen it, but you look at his numbers, they're there. Right. Um, I think a lot had to do with, you know, play calling. A lot of play calling just didn't seem right, and the run game not there. It was not helpful. With the amount of weapons that were there, uh, I think that, you know, McDaniel would have a field day. And the we biggest talked problem about it, Rob. They the missed. Only they missed areas. Tua got in trouble. The only times Tua got in trouble is when he held onto that ball for four seconds or more. When it was that first couple, the first couple reads weren't there. He kept hanging on, and that's the time he gets hurt. When he tries to hang on to it and be, you know, Superman, like you know, like everyone else, you know, out there, he ends up getting hurt. That's the only time he gets hurt is when he tries to do more and hang on to it too long. Brady. He's the quick well, he, re- he has the quick the read he and he'll be quick. able to hit those guys quick. Yeah, it it could be dynamic. I'm with you. All right, we got our man Chris Perkins coming up next to talk about the Dolphins. We'll certainly ask him about this. As we wait on our guest, we will take more calls. 877-99 on Fox. 877-996-6369. Let's jump in with Eric in Austin, Texas. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, E? Hi, hey, what's up, Rob? What's up, Chris? How are you? Hey, what's up? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are y'all? We good, man. So, I, I don't know about Tom Brady going to Miami because is that not going to stunt to his growth? Because you can't 
don't forget what Brian Flores put him through already, right? Benching him and then starting with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then you're going to bring Tom Brady in and then bench Tua again? I don't know about that. Well, look, I think the biggest concern with Tua is just the health. And, um, you know, and look, Rob, this is the NFL. It's big boy stuff. Sometimes you got to go through some tough situations, right? So uh, you got to deal with it. You might not like it, but you got to deal with it. All right, thank you. We're going to get to our next guest, Chris Perkins, Miami Dolphins columnist for the Sun Sentinel. Chris, what's up, brother? What's up? How are you? Fellas, what's up, man? It's, it's been a minute. What's going on? I, listen I know to I was te- every, every talking night. about you covering the heat, Did, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I, didn't you cover <laughs> hockey at one point, Chris? I, I they, they had me doing some hockey. I know it. They had me doing some, with the Panthers. Yeah, right. yeah, man. You got, you, hey, you got to be done personal. It all. You, you know what the deal. You I know. know. Hey, hey, I, wor- hey. I, I worked in Detroit. You know what I mean? Hockey exactly. town. So, I, Chris, that's exactly. why I was like, I remember Chris at the Joe covering stuff, hockey, and I was like, yep. Yeah, I remember him covering the NHL. So not that many brothers covered the NHL, but anyway, exactly. and more we, brothers yeah. covering it than playing. That's right. right. That's right. right. Hey, hey, but exactly. we we appreciate the support. Do you really listen to us down there? We appreciate that. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Driving home from the dormers, a hundred percent. The odd couple, man. Uh, thank you. Well, you. I, we I, appreciate I that, y'all. brothers. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, well, let's yeah, let's you know get that. to it. We were just talking about this Mike Florio report about Tom Brady. You know. It's still being on the table that he could end up with the Dolphins next season. What are your thoughts on I think it'd be a good idea for both parties and keep to it, having behind Brady to learn. Rob doesn't like it. What, I don't what like are your it at thoughts all. on it? Look, I, I got to go with Rob. I got to go with Rob on this one. And here's, here's why, Chris. Here's why. Because, listen, you have to play to a next season and see if he can give you 17 games. And then if he can give you that, then you're going to extend his contract. If not, I'm not extending that man's contract. I'm just not. And, look, you have evidence on your own team. Jalen Parker, the, the, the edge rusher, he had to retire from football when he was at UCLA because of concussions and, and other things. But concussions, he came back, and he has not had concussion issues. So, to me, I've got to see if Tua can make it through a 17-game season with no concussion issues. And and here's the big thing, Chris, is that these haven't been like blind side vicious hits. These have been normal hits that for some reason to his head violently snaps back in a whiplash fashion on the ground. And so if I'm the Dolphins, I need to find out about can I invest in Tua and if I bring in a a uh, a starter who is who is going to uh uh, start all, all the games, I'm not finding out anything about Tua. So I, I'm going to find out about Tua, who is a low-cost quarterback right now. Uh, Brady, to me, would be a one-year stopgap measure. I'm going to see what I've got in Tua, and then I'm going to progress from there. Let, let me ask mm-hmm. you, the uh, uh, you have evidence that Tua – played well when he was healthy uh like his name was in the MVP at one point category and the Dolphins were rolling I mean haven't they seen enough to know that he can play well let me tell you I'm this, just saying other, now, aside I'm, from I'm the, the injuries yep. because I'm a man who picked the Dolphins to finish eight and nine before the season so folks down here were on me anyway right how I, <laughs> how, yeah yeah you, you can imagine how folks were on me everybody was picking them to win 10 and 11 I picked them eight and nine how I view to a season is like this. The Dolphins were two and five against playoff teams. Tua was eight and five as a starter. Now, look, uh, Tua has two signature victories, in, in my opinion. That's, that's, uh, Buffalo and Baltimore yeah, early right. in the season. Huge. But then you go, but then you go, then he went on the five game win streak. And okay, you can run up 30 on Chicago and Detroit and Cleveland and Houston. But then you come back, San Francisco, 17 points, you lose. Chargers, 17 points, you lose. Green Bay, okay, he, he was concussed in the, in the fourth quarter. He threw three interceptions. But to me, Tua was 2-2 two and two in meaningful games, and he didn't win a meaningful game since September. So I still don't know what I have in Tua. I, I've got to go another year to see, is this guy legit, or was he part of the Mike McDaniel system that had uh, Tyreek Hill and, and Jalen Waddle uh, propping him up. I, can this man make something happen, 
or was he a product of the system? I still don't know that. I hear you uh, on everything you said, Chris, and it makes sense. And I totally understand, you know, wanting to see if Tua can get through 17. My thinking is this, though. They're built to win now. And I know they still got some holes. The defense got to improve. But the offensive line is improved. Obviously, you have a terrific receiving core. And like you said, I, I love Mike McDaniel. So yep. I, if Tua, let's say he gets hurt again, now yep. I'm essentially, you know, it's another season where we're built to win, but we're not going to because we don't have a QB. So I think bringing Brady in there one year, that's it, and then having yep. uh, Tua learn behind him. I get it. It's odd. But having Tua learn behind him, I don't know if sitting out a year helps his health, you know. But right. I, maybe, I don't know. But that, that's kind of my thinking on it. Well, you know what, Chris? No, I, I, I hear you. And while I disagree with you, here is the thinking to your point of view. You already pushed your chips to the middle of the table when you got Bradley Chubb, right? You gave up a, a, a first-round pick. And you, you signed Tyreek Hill. You signed Teron Armstead. Yep. You, you, you know, you got Bradley Chubb, so you already said we're going for it. You've opened up that two, maybe three-year window of going for it, Chris. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. I just disagree with it. I, I'm, I'm going to see what I can get with Tua. But, um, you know, for, for me, really the big picture with Tua and the way that things get complicated is we still don't know the whole picture. We don't know what his family says. Um, right. you, you know, it's... It, you don't have to make a final decision on Tua today on January 12th, but it's, it, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time. You don't have kinda, a whole lot of time. So yeah. I kind of hate to even bring this up, but is there, there have been rumblings about, I, I don't know that he would retire now, but you know, is this potentially career threatening? You have to think about that. Nobody, nobody has, has, has uh, said that definitively, but you have to think about that, that, you know, if, and, and look, Chris, if, if I'm the Dolphins, like, can I invest uh, $30 million a year in this man where a regular hit, not even a vicious right. blindside hit, but just a regular hit could put him out for four or five weeks, and that derails your whole season? Can you do that? And, and you know, this thing, is, is there's just a big unknown on this, and that's the thing with Tua. I feel bad for Tua. You know, the Dolphins have a big business decision to make here. And, and how do you say no to Tom Brady? Like, like right. what kind of idiot says no to Tom Brady? Well, did you watch so, Tom Brady play this year? We got to admit. Yeah, uh, thank it, you, Rob. Uh, thank you, Rob. Huh? You know, you know that's that one thing you can count on, Rob. You to do already the same know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chris. I love it. You know I love it. it. That's why I love the other couple. Because I, I, I agree with Rob. I'm, the, I'm that kind of idiot. Right. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Well, look, let's get to this weekend. I mean, I, I'm not giving them much of a chance. I think they had a shot. I would have picked Buffalo anyway, but I think they had a shot with Tua. Um, you, Anything, I mean, any hope that they can win this game with Skylar Thompson? Not really. Not really. Let, let's be honest. Not really. I give them a puncher's chance because they do have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, And it, it's not, you know, when you say the big play capability, it's not the deep pass necessarily. You can throw a 10-yard slant right. in front of them, and they, right. Right, they can make one man miss, and they're gone. And you can get two touchdowns that way, but... Really, you're, you're, you know, I, I picked Buffalo 27 to 17, and that's a very optimistic pick from the Dolphins standpoint. I think if the Dolphins can keep this, can keep the Bills in the 30s, maybe they can cover. They're not going to win. They're not going to win. But, but maybe they can cover if that matters to anybody out there. But if the, if Buffalo gets into the 30s, I just don't see how the Dolphins can score with them with a third team quarterback and Skylar Thompson. Uh, Raheem Mostert, the running back, might miss the game with a broken thumb. Uh, Teron Armstead at left tackle might miss. Uh, Liam Eichenberg at at right guard might miss. Brandon Schell at right tackle might miss. I just don't see how these guys can score more than 17 points. Help, Help me here, too. This is the one thing that bothers me in the NFL, and this is just me. Uh, two situations, real quick. Uh, you know, in, in Detroit, we saw, uh, Dan Campbell go nine and eight. People running around. He's the best coach ever. Uh, mm-hmm. um, 
and and uh, I just forgot his name with the Lions. Uh, went nine and seven. Uh, Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell went nine and seven. Yeah, 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 he yeah, was yeah. terrible. Yeah. He has to be fired. In Miami, Mike McDaniel was unbelievable. Started the season seven and three, finished eight and eight. Brian Flores started one and seven and finished eight and eight, and he has to he has to go. I know everybody's yeah. like McDaniel's is great, but but they faded at the end. Whereas I'm just saying, what's the difference? They were eight and eight, and now they're eight and eight. Tell me. Look, look, Rob. I I like what I look. I like Mike McDaniel, but I also like what Flo did. Flores I, was I, great. I love yeah, what Flores Brian Flores. And and look, people people will say because Flo was a defensive coach and blah blah blah. Flo had it right. Flo recognized. You can have a philosophy and a theory of, yeah, we're going to pass and we're going to score 27 points per game, but when reality hits you in the face, your team isn't capable of doing that. You have to shift gears. And so Flo went with, he's a defensive coach. He went with more of a defensive plan. I like that. I like a coach who, I have a, I have a system and a philosophy, but I also face reality. If my team isn't capable of doing that, I've got to be able to shift gears. That's what I liked about Flo. Um, I'm not sure that Mike McDaniel has shown that he can do that. Now, he's a rookie coach, right? but I'm not sure that he's shown that he can do that. I'll give McDaniel one more year. I hope he doesn't fall into that same thing of where the Dolphins had Joe Philbin and Adam Gase who thought that they could turn Ryan Tannehill into right. Aaron Rodgers right. or, or <laughs> Peyton Manning, and it's not going to happen. Low face reality that I, I, I just feel like the Dolphins too much listen to these coaches who say, I'm an offensive guru, I can do this for you. And it's like, yeah, reality says you need to play to what your system gives you, what your talent gives you. I All think right. Flo was more of a realist. That's what great, I liked about Flo. Great stuff, Chris. Great, yes. Keep up the great work. I always loved reading you, your stuff about the Heat. Appreciate and your you. stuff about the Dolphins is just as good. So great stuff. And man. for Keep me the about work. the Panthers. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers was temporary. Hey, fellas, y'all know I got respect for you. Y'all know I got love for you. So anytime. Thank you, oh, Thank you brother. Yeah. All right, peace.